Now let's take a look at the other parts of the object. I'll tab back into object mode and I'll press Alt H to bring everything else back. And let's take a look at one of these doorknobs. I'll select it, press Shift H and frame it up with the period key. Now for this object, I'll tab into edit mode. Let's take a look at this. If I zoom in a little bit too much there, I get some clipping issues. We can press the N key and adjust the clipping start here. It's currently at 0.1. I could set it to 0.01 and see if that helps. And it does. I'll hit the N key again there. Now, this object is really two pieces. If I hover over this part and press the L key, you can see that it only selects that piece. And if I then hover over this piece and press the L key, it only selects that piece. So we can break this up into two parts. I'll go ahead and select this and press U and unwrap. And that's what we get. That's not too bad. You can see some of the stretching happening here in the light blue area. But I don't think that's going to be a problem since this will probably be a fairly uniform texture that goes on to this. I'll hit the A key to deselect that, and then I'll press the L key. And now for this part, we could go ahead and try and press U and unwrap and see what happens, but we've got quite a bit of green here. And that may be stretching that could be unacceptable, even with a relatively uniform texture. But one way to test that is to apply our UV test material and texture to this object. So I'll just come over here and pull down this menu in the node editor and I'll just click UV test. Now if we tab into object mode, we can see what's happening here on our object. That's not looking very good. So we need to come up with a different solution for this doorknob. So if we tab back into edit mode, let's think about this. I'm gonna press Alt Z to go back to solid shading. And here's where we can begin to think about hiding our seams. So maybe we want to split this out at this seam here. Control E and mark seam. Once we do that though, this is now going to be a cylindrical piece. And we'll want to split this up so it lays down flat. So I'll go ahead and assign a seam here as well. Now we may need to split out this piece here. We can create a seam there. Even though that's right up front and in our view, that may be acceptable in terms of this particular object. And then I think I'll select an edge right down here and deselect this piece right there. So that's going to be split as a cylinder and lay down flat. Let's give it a try. I'll hit L, U, and unwrap. So now our UV islands are laying down a little bit flatter without as much stretching. Let's uh, press Alt Z and go back to our textured view and see what we think. It's looking better. In fact, this may be just fine in terms of our uniform metal texture. If this were an object where there were text or words written across this area right here, we may not be able to have that seam right there because it would break up that word. But with a metallic texture, that might just work. So let's go back into edit mode and let's select everything now. We can see here that we've got our UV islands overlapping each other within our zero to one space. And that's not good. If we laid down a texture on this, we would have the same texture happening in multiple UV islands, and we want to avoid that. So some nice tools that Blender offers us is down here under the UVs menu, we've got these two, Average Island Scale and Pack Islands. Average Island Scale will take all of these UV islands and scale them so they're proportionally the same size as the same pieces over in the 3D object. So to do that, I'll go ahead and press Control A, which is our shortcut key for that. And then we want to pack them into this zero to one space as we talked about previously. And to do that, we can press Control P and that packs them in. 
So we'll be using these tools quite a bit as we put together the final UV map of our object here. So let's try another piece. I will tab back into object mode, press Alt H, and let's take a look at this piece right here. I'll press Shift H. And this is a pretty simple piece. It's just a plate with the back face deleted. We could go ahead and just select this and press U and unwrap and see what happens. And because these corners are connected, they're pulling quite a bit as it tries to lay it out flat. So what I can do is select these individual edges here. Mark seams. And then when we UV unwrap again, we should see those corners relaxing a bit. And there we go. I'm going to press control up arrow so we can see it full screen. And you can see here that those corners have been split apart, which allows this whole piece to lay down flat without any stretching. And that's good. I'm going to hit control up arrow again. And so there we have our pieces UV mapped. I'll press Alt H. And now you may be wondering, what about this piece over here? Well, we could UV map this again, or we could just select it, delete it, and then duplicate and mirror this object over. So let's try that. With this selected, I'll go ahead and press Control up arrow so we can see it a little better. With this selected, I'll press Shift D and hit Enter. And then I'll come down here to the Object menu, choose Mirror, and then I'll choose the Y global axis here. I'll choose Y and hit enter. And there we go. So now we have our object mirrored over to the other side. And this worked because our pivot point or object origin was down here in the center of the grid in the center of the door. All right. So now I'll press control up arrow once again. In the next video, what let's do is let's combine all of these into one object and then use our scale and pack tools to pack it into the zero to one space.